and welcome to our fireside chat on breaking into data science. Today we're having a conversation with world-renowned big data and data science influencer Ronald Van Loon and Anand Narayanan, Simply Learn's Chief Product Officer. You'll learn what the different career path options are, including degrees and online training, and how to find the right entry-level job in data science at the right organization. Ronald and Anand will also be answering frequently asked questions about data science and sharing advice for a career in this growing industry. Anand is the Chief Product Officer for Simply Learn, where he leads product vision, roadmap, and delivery. He previously headed the Cloud Development Division at Rackspace and has led product teams at Dell and National Instruments. So thank you for joining us, Anand and Ronald. Hello, Dan. Hello, Anand. Hey, Ronald. Good to, good to have you here. Thank you. Um, Dan, thank you so much. Let's get started. Obviously, this is a very exciting topic to cover. Um, and as Dan covered it, we're going to cover most of the topics that are relevant to someone who wants to break into data science. And really what makes this field exciting, what's happening in the space, and what you can do to really be part of that um, really exciting space. Um, I want to just add a few more points about Ronald. Ronald is a blogger, author, consultant for large companies and is a top 10 influencer in the space of data. So truly honored to have him here with me. And you know, I'm also very proud to say that Ronald is a friend and a consultant for Simply Learn as well. He's our faculty and uh, you know, we built our courses with his guidance. Uh, so Ronald, really, really happy to have you here. And uh, did I cover your introduction well? Do you wanna add a few more words? Very well, and I'm proud that we have already for more than three years a relationship and working together. So it's, it's a big honor and it's a pleasure to be in this webcast. Wonderful. I also wanted to quickly uh, say hello to the folks on Facebook Live and YouTube. I know you guys are there and we're streaming on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube as well. Um, I will try my best and Ron will as well to answer as many questions as uh, possible. But keep in mind, you know, not everything is going to be possible to answer. So we'll do our best to cover as much as we can. Just and now let's question, uh, Anand. Can you see me? Because um, I cannot see myself on my screen. So I be... cannot see you, unfortunately. But okay. um, that's all right. Okay. Um, I think I think we have got your words of wisdom, so I think we'll be good to go. Okay. Thanks. All right. So you know, let's just jump right in. We've got um, a lot of people here. Excellent. So let's start with really the question of you know, data science over the last two to three years has really taken off. And if you look at any tech paper, you'll find that. Um, any news article talks about how data science and data engineering and machine learning is really changing the game area. Uh, but let's start with something very simple, right? Um, when you look at data science professionals today, um, what is that driving force that's driving this kind of change? And when companies or organizations look for top talent today, um, what are they looking for for these leading businesses? What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think in general, they, they need, of course, for, for skilled professionals. And if I look to all the companies that I talk to, there's this, this need for the skilled professionals, educated professionals. And I think these in general professionals that I can identify a business need, then create and deploy a data solution. That's, that's the core. Um, if I look to the data-driven and tech companies that um, I'm working with, they're often looking for specialized talent. Um, I, I travel to China, I travel to India, um, to the US, to, to Europe, and what I see more and more is that they're looking for specialists versus the generalist, and this is more for the advanced companies. Um, if you look to the, uh, the AI and data science talent that the company is really able to possess, that's very important because this determines their ability to be successfully and be, be successful and successful in managing the analytics in the future. So for companies, analytic skills is really important for being and staying competitive. So this is for a company so important that it defines their innovation in, in the future. So today, what I see as well is that the decision-making process has shifted from, let's say, top-level, C-level executives, more where the data scientist is involved. We have more multidisciplinary teams and where often the data scientist combined with um, a craftsman, I call it, with an expert together define solutions, more, more as an independent team together supported with um, all different kinds of sales, marketing, uh, product managers. But this is what I see changing. So people and um, let's say companies are looking for people that can manage in, in, and work in such a team. So data scientists, they should focus on one particular field 
and becoming an expert in this, which can be, for example, data labeling, it can be machine learning, it can be statistical modeling or parallel computing, for example. And I think next to the, the let's say, the AI skills, the, ma the, the machine learning skills, um, and people should also have cloud computing, IoT and industrial robotics uh, background and understanding what, what it means. So what we see is there's a need for, for people that have experience in providing and able and making able to provide data insights. Um, they should be able to acting in an organization that is dynamic and they should be responsive to changes. Uh, they should be able in this team to work on customized demand. So it's not, let's say, a standard process anymore. And it needs to, um, a data scientist needs to be combination of a communicator, he needs to understand trends, he needs to be an innovator, a problem solver, but also a mathematician, a mathematician and a computer scientist. So what I see is that data scientists, they, so are, they're really critical in this process for organizations and they're critical in the process for organizations to transform data into action. So with this in mind, um, I think this is what, what we see and also addresses the importance of the data scientist and his new type of role within an organization. So this is where I think organizations, um, why this need for, for data scientists is so, um, so high and why organizations really want to have the best experts in the industry. Got it, Ronald. And thank you for that very in detail uh, sort of explanation to that. Now, call me a skeptic, but I got to ask you, there have been a lot of different, you know, technologies that are in season um, many times over. And, and, and the question I guess I have for you is, is there a real demand for data scientists today? Or is this just one of those hypes that, you know, people talk about? Um, and if, if it's real, you know, are there specific shortages, specific areas that you think data scientists should be doing or getting involved in to really shape their career path in education? So two-part question there. Yeah, so um, is there demand? Yes, and it's, and it's not, I think, a temporary demand. It's something that, that will stay. If we see where the demand initially, where it was um, the really demand that the, the fast moving tech companies, the, the more the leading companies, now we see it on one end in different departments, whether it's an um, R&D, but we saw, see it also in different industries, whether education, whether it's government, whether it's automotive or, or in industrial, um, in energy, uh, tech companies, healthcare, basically in any type of industry where data is important, we see this demand. And if we look to more some statistical data, um, we see a year over year increase from about 29% for data scientists. Wow. From, from the job site, on one end you have sites like Indeed, where this 29% is coming from. On the other hand, on the other hand you have job sites like, like DICE, where they, classify the data scientist as a high demand skill. Maybe some other things which I think is a good indicator that there is a demand, it's the, the, the fee that they pay. And where the fee on average for a data scientist, so it's of course depending on region and then depending on skills, um, but it's about $117,000, which means that if there was no demand, this type of salaries for sure wouldn't Would have happened. No, yeah. and um, I think as well there's, let's say, a, a geographic difference. Um, in the U.S. there's a huge demand in specific cities. So I think in, in, um, in 2018, there are multiple statistics, but this was a statistic that there's a demand of around 150,000 data scientists in, in the U.S. Um, and, of course, um, cities like New York and San Francisco and Los Angeles, there's the biggest demand. Um, in Europe, there's also demand, but much much, much lower. To give you an idea, in the UK, they had in 2018 around 1,100 jobs in, in demand. Um, I traveled to China frequently. There is a huge demand. Um, I, I spoke to, the, let's say, the LinkedIn from, um, from China, and they were talking about more than a, a million, but these are not confirmed, confirmed figures. But you see that there's substantial demand um, but also, yeah, that there's, of course, a geographical difference, and this has to do with the cost of living on one hand and, and the expertise that, that you have. And if you look a little bit more forward, um, some statistics of the, of the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, they estimate that 
in 2026, there's about 11.5 million jobs in data scientists and data science and analytics. That's their forecast, which is, I think, substantial. Um, so it's a, it's a good area to be in. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and I think, Ronald, just to maybe add a few uh, thoughts from my side as uh, someone who runs an education company here, uh, you know, what I can tell you is, number one, uh, one of the regions that you didn't cover, India, uh, the, the story is exactly the same. And we see the number of learners and interested folks that come to Simply Learn to actually take the courses uh, is driving actual data science programs to historical growth rates. So uh, certainly true for us as well. And I wanted to, um, you know, give you a different, uh, you know, sort of perspective. Uh, the demand for these programs is pretty high today. Uh, but speaking of programs, I think, you know, I want to take a little different path. Um, there's one confusion that always arises in this space, right, which is, you know, if you, t if you talk to a set of data scientists, they'll tell you, if you don't have a PhD, then what are you talking about? You're not a real data scientist. And then you have others that say, look, I did it on YouTube. I think I'm a data scientist. So, you know, Ron, what's your thought? <laughs> a typical data scientist that's, you know, let's, let's set the bar at world class, right? Um, what do you think is sort of the qualification requirements for someone who wants to get into a data scientist role? And by the way, that's also tied into one of the questions that came online, which is, look, what is the kind of background that you need um, to get into data science? So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, I think there's, there's um, a split. On one hand, very advanced companies that have a different view on this than, let's say, starting companies. Mm -hmm. So in general, data, data scientists need a strong education, appropriate degrees and certifications. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, what, what type of um, certification? So 80%, 88% um, have a master degree currently, and 46 a PhD, which is still quite high. Um, so if you look to, to job sites like, um, like DICE, data science, um, job candidates have this type of degree. 27 have a master's degree, and 10% have a doctor's degree, and this, in this uh, sites like DICE, 30% have a bachelor's degree. What I see, and that was with companies in China that, that I've spoken, um, Yi2, which is the leading in face, facial recognition, they stopped hiring PhDs. So they say mm. they have too much knowledge, and it's too hard to change them, which makes a very different view. So they started with bachelors, and they start educating bachelors themselves. But this, um, to keep in mind, these are very advanced companies. They have a lot of experience. They have a large data science group, and so they have a different view on, on this as well. Um, so I think that's if we look to the type of level, that's what what you need to be yeah, need to have in mind. Got it. And I think Ronald, what I'm hearing you say is, while yes, there are a lot of PhDs in the space. Um, the minimum requirement really is a bachelor's degree, um, and I think from there you can really grow from that point. Is that maybe how I'm some addition. So if you have a bachelor degree, it's yeah. maybe smart to look for companies that are very advanced already. Yeah. They look for less experience, and you can step in. And I have some other examples like like Elsevier. They just look for bachelors with um, almost any type of education, and they just say, hey, you can learn on the job over here. So yeah. you see that companies that are more advanced, they are more willing to look a little bit broader than just the PhD um, that, that you need. Got it. Understood. Um, and I think a good, interesting, you know, you know follow-up question to that would be, um, you know, let's say I'm one of the audience, I'm trying to get into data science, I'm trying to break into it. Um, let's say I have a bachelor's degree um, and, I, and I'm, I got into a company. I'm now a, a junior data scientist or a data analyst in the company, right? Um, now, in terms of career paths and the choices that you have in terms of, you know, doing business innovation and having a real strong career in this space, right? Um, in your experience, and you consult with a lot of large enterprises, smaller companies as well, um, what do you see as sort of those roles that are opening up in this space? And you mean then specifically to the, the typical roles that they are? That's right. So, um, I think there are quite some, some careers. Um, yeah. Go over it. Um, I don't know if you want a short or a long answer uh, because there are quite, qu quite some roles and then we can go in, in quite depth. Um, but let's, yeah. let's quickly go. Yeah, let's do the quick version first and maybe we go deeper. I think we'll go deeper on data science itself in a few minutes. We can go deeper on some specific roles a little later. Okay, so first you have a BI developer. Maybe you can help me out um, if, if there are people that say, hey, this is something that we need to go in, in more depth. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is focus on increasing uh, the accuracy and, and the use for, for BI. Uh, that's one. We have a database administrator, and this 
Prey is focusing on the design and deployment and ongoing maintenance of, of the company database. I think these are two typical roles. We have the application architect, and this career focuses on the development and analysis of, of different software projects. Then we have the data architect, not the application architect, but the data architect, and mm -hmm. they develop they focus on developing complex databases for, for the business. We have the enterprise architect and this career focusing on all the various business components within an enterprise architecture. And I think um, one role which we, we could go a little bit more in depth is the data scientist. So mm -hmm. this career focusing on the analytics aspects of the data and how to apply it um, into a business problem and a solution. So what a data scientist does and it typically is perform statistical analysis and then performs the modeling and they work both with structured and unstructured data from all different kinds of sources whether it's real time whether it's um, um, from internal data external data social data so it's all depending of course on, on um, the type of challenges that you need to solve and they help also to communicate to non-technical personnel to the business and i met the the cto from from microsoft uh, Norman Judah, and he said the key focus that we have currently is on people that can explain in five minutes to the business what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why it should benefit. So this communication yep. part is is very important. Another role, and another role is the data engineer, and this career path focuses on turning the data into better analytics formats. And the, it's, 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 let's say, collecting data from data, different data sources, looking at the data quality, the data storage, the data availability and accessibility. Um, also very important role, I think, and, and that's um, also the company I'm working with, focusing a lot on data collection and data quality. Then we have the data and analyst, and this helps basically business making better, more accurate decision based on, on the data, and they collect the information interpreted it and analyzed the data and they present their insights most often in, in report. Another, I think, challenging role and, and it's a, a role that's growing quite steeply and quickly is the machine learning engineer. And he used big data tools and, and programming to create scalable data science models and this, uh, put these models into production. So they develop programs that can control robotics, can control machines, um, have all kinds of advanced data and analytics solutions, but they develop the algorithms that help machines and identify patterns and, and learn by, by itself. Then we have the statistician, uh, statistician, and he collects and displays the numerical data and he identifies the trends and creates usable information for it. That's basically um, yeah, who, who starts uh, who started. So if you look for your career path, development, it happens that during your career, you can develop all kinds of skills. I, I was telling about this with you two. I was telling about Elsevier. They, people, they just start with, um, within the organization and then they can learn. They work within teams and within the teams, you can find what skills um, you like, what interests you like, what experience you like, what type of the business you like. And this way you can develop your career as well. So it's not that they add, um, set in stone Mm -hmm. that you need to say, okay, this is my career path and this is what I'm, I'm going to do. It's also a matter of experiencing it, finding out what you like, and especially where you perform well. Yep. So, so Ronald, is it fair to say, and maybe this is sort of, maybe from a training perspective, what I see in the industry quite a lot, um, they're really, in, you know, the way you were explaining it, there are sort of two different domains within this, uh, you know, these roles. And sticking to that same question, um, my sense is that you have what we consider data engineering kind of practices where you're managing the data, um, you know, getting it clean, having it ready for data models. And then you have the data scientists, data analysts, and machine learning scientists that are using that data to uh, predict, create models, and, you know, create um, visualizations and strong recommendations out of those. Is, is that a fair way to maybe split these roles? Yeah, I think it's, it's a good point, and it's a specific point that many people talk about um so there's there's quite some confusion in the market about the yep. distinction between the data engineer and, and the data scientist and especially with with terms and the difference between data science and engineering if, if you look to data science it's much more focused on math and statistics during your education and which leads to much stronger analytics and model building with machine learning and ai and you need to understand it 
and understand the business also, the business aspects. Um, so you can, on one hand, solve business problems, but also communicate them. This, so this yep. is what I'm referring to, what uh, Norm Duda from the CTO from Microsoft said, hey, this is one of the ma most important skills for a data scientist, and especially working in it. Then you have the data engineer, who is more on the programming side, and usually with advanced skills in programming, and they can develop software solutions uh, for big data, and to be able to select the best tools, technologies, and frameworks for each task. So the biggest distinction is um, strong analytics focus with data science and stronger programming focus with uh, data engineering. Wonderful. Thank you, Ronald. And I'll take this chance also to answer a few questions based on what you said uh, for some of our uh, you know, viewers here. Uh, one of the questions really is, should I choose data science or machine learning or data engineering? I think, folks, what you heard from Ronald is, uh, in some sense, you have really two separate domains within the data domain. Uh, you have the folks that are more engineering-like, where you're actually managing the data. You're making sure that the data platform is set right, and you're cleaning the data, providing it, and making it available. And the second is being more of a statistician, predictive analyst, being a machine learning person um, that's using the data to really bring those insights to the front. So it's not a question of choice. And I think, you know, Rondo said it really well. I think at some point in time, you've got to ask yourself, what, which one of those two domains is more exciting? and aligns with what your skills are in terms of communication slash engineering skills. So it is a choice. Now, is market demand uh, you know, specifically high on one or the other? The answer is there are lots of jobs and tens and thousands of jobs right now in both of these domains. Um, so I can tell you that either choice is a pretty successful one. Um, so this question was specifically asked on the uh, forum, so I just wanted to make sure we answered that. Um, so hopefully that gives some clarity as to data science, machine learning, data engineering. How do you think about that? Um, that gives you a little bit of a sense of that. Ronald, but let's move forward. Um, you know, let's talk about these companies that you work with. You know, typically they, uh, we know the roles now. You told me, you told us all these are specific roles. There are roughly two types of domains that people work in. Uh, let's get into skills. And actually that's the set of questions that have come on the forum as well. So this will be pretty interesting for a lot of people. Um, you know, if I'm a data scientist, what is that standard definition, right? What do companies look for in terms of skills that a data scientist brings to the table um, and I'm sure there are multivariate types of skills that they bring to the table, but I'd love for you to go through sort of the specifics here. Yeah, so um, if, if we look to the, the skills, I think on one hand, yes, um, data scientists have analytic skills, logical thinking, critical thinking, mathematics, and also project management. Um, if you look more to, to the technical part, is they need to have understanding of neural networks and deep learning and natural language processing and, and machine learning. Um, so this is, I think, quite important. And if we look more to technical skills, it's, it's Python, it's SQL, it's, it's R, um, which are the, the main uh, uh, technologies yeah. to work on, or, but also in Spark, Tableau, and, and, and SAS, um, or Java, and, and TensorFlow, of course, C++. Um, but if, if you look, let's say, the, the, the top three, what companies are looking for is Python, R, and, and SQL. And this is closely followed by Jupyter Notebooks, um, Unix Shell, and AWS and TensorFlow. But and maybe next next to this, well, uh, maybe one addition, um, and again, it's, it's coming back all the time, is you need to be able to communicate in a team. Um, so you need to be able to do some storytelling, because data on itself doesn't tell a story. You need, as a data scientist, you need to communicate the data insights. You need to understand the business problem. You need to be able to communicate in, in business language. and um, also, next to this, you need to have, of course, problem-solving abilities. You need to have team capabilities, and I think you need to be very curious because there's always something new to, to discover. I think that's, that's very important. Um, and, and a foundation, um, if you want to be a good data scientist, that's, uh, that's something what com companies are looking for. Wonderful. And, and I think, uh, Ronald, uh, you know, again, Building on what you've just said, I think I want to answer one question, that a couple of questions that have come in from YouTube and from uh, Facebook as well. Um, if I'm getting started now, would I be seen as a brand new, um, you know, fresher in data science, data science, or would I be given the due, uh, you know, experience value that I bring to the table? And I think, you know, one thing you said, and I'll, I'll pull a few things that you said to answer the question. Um, you know, fundamentally, what we're what we're seeing is that because the demand is so high, and this has exploded so quickly. Um, there are actually very few, uh, you know, data scientists out there that cover the entire spectrum of what, um, you know, Ronald just talked about. Um, so, so here is an interesting, you know, takeaway here 
if you are able to cover these skills in depth and breadth and are able to then present a very strong view of those specific skills, you do have a pretty, pretty strong uh, background in, that, in, that, in data science and you do have a real chance. Uh, so I just want to call that out. The skills are something that uh, are very important, and I think you know Ronald walked us through those. Um, and I think storytelling, Ronald, you said something very important here as well. Every data scientist is a great storyteller. Otherwise, you, you're not able to communicate the insight. So thank you for that. Really helpful. Um, now, now you talked about storytelling. It ties into something called you know when, when you have so many people claiming they're data scientists and everybody has done a certain degree or they've taken their own training you know on the job or even a certification program for the matter, right? How do you stand out? How do you make yourself more marketable um, in, the, in the industry? Yeah, I think, I think it's a good question because um, as more people call themselves data scientists or more people become data scientists, you also need to stand out. Um, so on one hand, it's important to focus on the, the most important and maybe even you know, popular skills as well. Um, so having demonstrated skills in, in data analysis and machine learning, um, develop your communication skills, uh, make them very clear as well. And especially if you apply for a job, I think it's important to show that um, you can go one step further and improve your knowledge in, in deep learning. So you can stand out in, from a knowledge perspective. You need to have the basis for, for Python, R, or, or both even. Um, so that's, let's say, um, in general, the, the blow is also, I think, one of the, the um, the skills that can can be helpful and how you can can stand out. Yeah, and Ronald, this is probably a, a very shameless plug from my side. Um, you said Python R Tableau is something that uh, is also getting pro, you know proficiency or, or popularity. Um, so the Simple Learn course does cover these concepts, and we do make sure that's covered. So I just want to put a very shameless plug there. Mm -hmm. uh, but talking about talking about online certification, which Simple Learn is one of them, right? Um, you know. There are companies that talk about very specific uh, capabilities that are beneficial in actual practice, right? So what types of training and certifications are today uh, valued by prospective employers? Are there specific areas that these certifications tend to matter more? And if so, what, 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 what works? Yeah, so there, there are multiple areas. Um, maybe go through it um, step by step. One end, of course, we have big data. Um, most probably you and, and companies, they understand more or less the, the impact and the possibility of big data. Um, but it creates also the, the, the company's the ability to disparate data from, from the large set into AI algorithms and better understand and predict the patterns to create, uh, to predict trends and to predict behavior. So it helps businesses use um, analytics to create better services, better solutions, better product, better experiences, and new business. Mm -hmm. And that's what in, in essence, I think they are looking for. They help, they're looking for how can you help the business? So um, you can think about um, courses like big data, Hadoop or Spark, um, data mining, uh, predictive model building, and that's one part. Then we have BI and data science. So gaining additional professional certification in BI or data science can really indicate to employers that you have the right skill set and that's needed to help them to perform application analysis or data modeling for, for centralized data warehousing. So I'd suggest um, looking into certifications in BI reporting, BI development, and, and data ma management. And for data science, there's numerous professional certifications that can help you with your ongoing, ongoing um, education. And you can look for certifications in area like probability, like probability and statistics, or visualization and, and machine learning. Then we have AI, AI and machine learning. And on one hand, it's an ongoing education in, in this area. I think every area is an ongoing education. You can't stop because the technology developments are moving so fast that once you don't educate yourself, you're behind um, um, quite quickly. Yep. And for, for this, um, I suggest looking at professional certifications in uh, predictive analytics, in deep learning, or natural language pr programming. Then we have Enterprise Cloud Platform. Um, I'm not sure if I need to go in, in depth um, over that. Um, so I think that's um, quite um, also an, uh, an area for, for, let's say, improvement. Um, and yeah, that's, I think, the, the most important areas. Wonderful. So, so now let's say you've done all these things. You've got those skills. You've got the training required. Um, you know, so, so now you know, I'm one of the folks that is actually putting my resume out there, and I'm saying, look, I want to find the right job. 
what, what can I realistically expect, right? I've done my training. I know these skills. Uh, can you give a sense of what, what the career looks like early on and how, how the progression might happen? What, what is expected of the first job? Yeah, of, of course, it, it really depends on uh, which, which company you start working. Uh, mm. but let, let me give some examples of, of career paths. So generally speaking, after you've obtained your degree in da data science, um, you might, might start with an internship, which can help you really moving forward. And this will give you the work and experience you need to be more attractive to be hired by the company. And then you need to start putting out active job applications because you have some experience, you know what you're talking about, it's not only theory anymore. Um, and this leads often to a more in-depth, hands-on experience. Um, so that's, um, I think, a typical next step that you can have. And you may find that to advance your career in this area and, and go more beyond your current position, you need to advance your degree as well. So at which point you can earn some professional certification in a specialized area or um, even go for a master degree. And this will open up more avenues for you professionally. Mm -hmm. If we look to um, entry level jobs and, and um, for, for data scientists, they find that some internships of project management experiences is really a plus. So some practical experience next to, let's say, the theoretical um, experience is really something that you should focus on. So just start. And if you cannot um, get an internship, just start online and show your experience, um, take some data sets um, and start trying it out. Um, then if you look to internship, they can even lead often to a full-time job. So if you start as an, an internship, often companies see what you can do and um, if you fit within the culture and m move on. If you look to a master, um, in, in data science, this can really be helpful. I think that that's quite clear because certification is still very important and where companies are looking for, and especially to distinguish yourself um, within in, in the market. Um, even if you apply, I think, for, for jobs and you don't meet all the specific listed requirements, I think it's good to do this. On one hand, to gain experience, Gain experience mm -hmm. with applying for a job and see how, how to respond, how to present yourself. Uh, but it's also companies um, over ask or they cannot always find the exact right person. So it's better to have a good culture fit, a, a person who's really driven um, to make it happen. So if you show yourself, um, I think that that can be very helpful and, and just spread the word. So it's, don't sit and wait, just try an error and learn um, and reflect each time that you had an interview or had a talk. Wonderful. Very good pointers there, Ronald. So I think the big story here is um, build your skills gradually and uh, you know, apply for the role even if you feel like you don't have everything checked off because uh, demand is there and if you have uh, most of the skills, you can get the job. So that's a very exciting opportunity there. Um, but you know, let's say you're doing that and you want to really build your experience even further, right? Are there things a data scientist or a budding or, or someone who wants to be a data scientist can do to really build up that portfolio so that they really stand out in the crowd? Yeah, I think um, we're discussing it basically. It's a red line through the whole discussion. Keep on educating yourself and, and keep on moving forward and extending your, your portfolio. So you can check out other data scientists' job postings and find out what kind of job description until so you have a better idea of um, how to present your skills, but also mm -hmm. see what kind of demands there is and how you should extend your portfolio. Next to that, data scientists can work on their own projects independent of their current company. I was telling this already, if you cannot get this internship, start creating your own project and show, um, let's say, build your expertise um, in a specific area and show it. And if you really love your job, you can come often to, to great performances as well. And if you search for a certain job, start looking where you can match, let's say, your, your passion with what you're, you're developing yourself. Um, so don't force yourself to work on a project or build your portfolio in an area that you're not truly enthusiastic about. Um, I think internal drive and passion is still the main reason to be in this domain be in any domain, basically, um, because in the end, if you're not truly passionate about it, um, I don't believe it's, it's really going to work. Um, I, I believe in passion. That's the, the main driver of everything what you, what you do um, for every organization or basically everything what you do. 
Um, another thing is try finding a data set that approaches a problem that you're interested in, and you can go to sites like Kaggle, um, as I mentioned before, and, and see what you can do with it as well. So test it out and communicate your findings. So share your findings on, on groups, what you have done, show it to the world because some people will pick it up and mm -hmm. they are looking for a specific, let's say domain expertise, the, the specific experience and specific enthusiasm. Um, and if you share what you do, um, somewhere it can be picked up and you can find your dream job that fits with all your experiences and um, let's say all, all your passions. Thank you, Ronald. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and you know, one more sort of shameless plug from my side. Uh, you talked about hands-on projects. So something that Simpler and believes very strongly is to have um, the ability to, for you to take a data science course and come out with industry-ready projects. So that is part of the curriculum that we provide as well. So that um, that is there, and I completely agree with that view. Uh, we find that uh, when recruiters come to us, uh, they do look for actual hands-on projects that are being done. And it, uh, you know, the, the other side of that world, which is how the recruiters think of it, is absolutely uh, resonating with what you just said. Um, with that said, Ronald, I'm going to stop here. Uh, we're going to take a few questions that have come up, and you know, some I think you could answer, some I think I could answer. Let me take some that I think questions are mainly for me, and it, Ronald, you're welcome to jump in as well. Uh, one of the questions is, you know, you know, Ronald talked about statistics, probability. They're pretty important as something that you would need to do if you want to be a pretty good data scientist. So. Um, if I were to go and get certified, do I really need to pre-read these things and then go get certified or take a degree or not? Um, I'll answer that question really quick. Um, fundamentally, today, if you look at uh, strong certification courses, and I'm talking about the ones that are really well thought through, they start with two things, and Ronald talked about those skills. One is a statistics primer, and they tell you exactly what you need to know before you can go into the more advanced topics. That's part one. And the second is something Ronald talk, talked about as well, uh, the basic level of programming in Python or R, right? So these are the two major areas that, uh, you know, data scientists are using. You know, those are the tools that are in, in vogue today. Um, so the answer is if you're picking a good certification or a good program, it would be included in the course. So um, hopefully I've answered that question. Um, the second thing I think uh, is coming out in what country should I apply if I were to really want to have global data science role. I think maybe you missed uh, Ronald's early part of the statements. Um, Ronald was very clear in saying that there's a huge market in the U.S., and I personally know that the numbers in India are skyrocketing as well, so two places that definitely are growing very fast are India and U.S. Additionally, Ronald mentioned that China is another place that is starting to become pretty strong um, in their capability on this data science and machine learning. So I just want to reiterate what Ronald's already said. Um, Maybe in addition, yeah. um, if, let's say, you're looking for, let's say in China there's, there's a huge demand, in India a huge demand, in the U.S. is a huge demand, but look for companies that fit with your passion and look for the best in class. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you work for the best in class, you can learn fast. And on the other hand, yeah, you can travel all over the world once, once you're good. And um, let's say data science is not really focused on a specific location. It's more on the projects. And I see companies spreading their data science resources and teams all over the world, um, as well as Everybody can be in San Francisco or in Bangalore um, or in Shanghai, but the demand is big and they're most expensive well. So companies are also looking for other areas to develop other areas and to develop skills in other areas. So it's not like, oh, you have to be in a certain specific area to yeah, have yeah. the best job. And on the other hand, these um, areas where the, where the most demand, they're also most expensive. And so have in mind that if you need housing in San Francisco or something like this, um, it can be quite a challenge. I saw a nice documentary about it that uh, just a bed costs $1,200 per month, um, and then you have a shared room. So <laughs> it, it's also to keep something that you keep, want to keep in mind. Makes a lot of sense. We'll take a few more questions in the end, but before you know, we get there, I think, Ronald, you know, as a summary conclusion, you know, any major takeaways that you want to share with the group before we get into some more questions? Um, yeah, I think we had discussed already a, a couple of times. One is keep on educating yourself uh, because it doesn't stop. The technology is moving forward so quickly that if you stop, the moment you stop educating yourself, basically you, you get behind. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, that's very important. Um, if we look another thought and, and another, let's say, conclusion, um, there's a demand and there's an increase in demand, and that's something that 
will not stop. So you don't have to be afraid that if you start into in this, into this field that you don't get a job. It's really depending on, on yourself. Um, then another part is this practical experience. You were mentioning it already in the, the, the core set from Simply Learn, but focus on practical experience. And if you don't, if you can't get it, um, just start with it online um, and, and make yourself, um, let's say, um, make it a habit to do things next to your job and to develop yourself. And I think the last part is an important part is the communication skills. So if you really want to stand out, be able to summarize what you do, why you do, and what type of results it will have, and be honest over there with the results, because it's better to say you won't get the right results or um, um, can't make it, or it's just, um, let's say, um, a trial and error process, be able to communicate it. And the ones who can communicate the best, you don't need the best skills, you can, but then you are an expert in a certain area, have the best communicating skills, and that's something where you really can stand out. So I think that's my few cents um, as, a, as a key takeaway. Wonderful. Thank you, Ronald. Uh, we'll take a couple, three questions more that came uh, here uh, between Ronald and me. Uh, one, one question that's coming up is, you know, in terms of resources um, that folks can take on to self-study and educate themselves, uh, you talked, of course, about Kaggle, which is a great resource. Um, to look at these kind of data projects and data sets, if you may. And you talked about internships. Any other guidance in terms of resources that folks can go to to get a little more uh, self-study done? Yeah, so on one end, um, as you mentioned, Kaggle is a great resource. Um, what I use a lot is Data Science Central and KD Nugget, not, let's say, to find the, the right content um, to mm -hmm. practice yourself, but to find access to the right content. And what I do as well is I follow certain data scientists um, on Twitter, um, on Google News. So I have all kinds of news feeds to have very specific input from either um, other thought leaders in, in the domain um, and from different sites. So you get updates continuously. And yeah, depending on what you need, you, you can pick from it. Got it. Wonderful. Um, and I will probably answer one other thematic question that seems to be coming up quite a bit, which is, I'm a different role today. I'm either a technical manager or I'm an accountant and I want to get into data science and, you know, how do I quickly progress through my career? Um, and maybe, maybe from my perspective, I'll quickly, you know, give a story there. I think Ronald has actually covered a lot of that topic as we went through. Uh, but I think the most important thing is, um, let's say you're a technical accountant or, or even a technical manager. Um, the core skills that Ronald talked about are really, really important, right? So you have to have some sense of data science in terms of the statistics part, the programming part, uh, being able to actually apply these in specific examples. And once your technical core competency is there, you then can talk about, um, you know, I was a manager before, I managed a team, I managed an organization, and you can very quickly move through that um, organization and, and ranks if you may. Um, so this is not that different from moving laterally and then growing within that role, uh, but that's how you should think about it. And, you know, Ronald also talked about other places where you could begin if you're absolutely starting at the beginning. Um, it is to take online certifications or even a bachelor's in data science, potentially, um, to get that credential on your resume. And, you know, Ronald talked about internships, which is a very good way, uh, which you might do actually separately from your main job. You might take on little projects on the side where you are basically building up your resume with specific projects that make you a lot more credible in the market, right? Um, so I just wanted to cover a lot of these questions that are coming up that I believe Ronald has answered. And just uh, make it really yeah, yeah, please go ahead. So yep. if, if you look, let's say, if you come from another domain, you have um, a couple of strengths. You have domain knowledge, and probably you have more communication skills than in, in what a traditional data scientist has from from, base, from, uh, from his education. So look at your strengths and uh, complement your weaknesses. And your weaknesses you can complement by drive, by passion, and doing the, the online courses. And then as long as you're passionate and you, you, you put your time in it, you can learn it. It's not, um, not magic. So I think even if you come from a different perspective, and then I'm referring to um, data scientists that I interviewed at Elsevier, most of them come from a different background, either from law um, or social, uh, social science or all different kinds of backgrounds where they basically are not so much concerned about what your background is, 
they're concerned about your passion, about your skills, about your drive, about your curiosity. Um, that's what, what really matters um, to be successful in this domain. So it's not only about technical knowledge and about statistician. Got it, Ronald. Um, one question that seems to be coming to me quite a bit, uh, and, and I promise this is not a marketing plug for my side, but there are a lot of questions here. The question that's being asked is, how simple are different? So I'll answer the question. And secondly, in terms of job guarantees, job assist, you know, what, what does that do? And I'll quickly answer that question. So one thing that Simple Learn does a little different is we don't believe that plain video-based learning is actually possible. Um, you know, we've got so many folks here, 100 plus people here watching us, um, you know, hundreds of people watching this. And the reason you're here, you're getting a live feed, you're answering questions that you have, hopefully to the best of our abilities, right? Uh, you just don't get that in a video, right? So one thing Simple Learn strongly believes in is that live interaction with experts like Ronald is absolutely necessary for you to actually progress in your career. So we follow a sort of, at a very high level, of blended approach, which is watch videos, interact with experts, do projects. So that's one thing that sets us apart. A little different from what you would get out of a YouTube or you know, other mediums that do pure video-based approach. Um, on job guarantees or job assist, we never do a job guarantee, and I'll just be very honest about that, because it does depend on what your capabilities are in terms of storytelling, marketing yourself, and your own abilities, right? But what we can do absolutely is to get you to that point where the skills Ronald talked about are covered 100%, and you have projects. There are 30 plus projects in our course, by the way, um, and then four capstones that you have to complete. So pretty rigorous in that sense. So you will have a portfolio that you can come out with. Um, and Job Assist really gets you the career events, the resume, you know, they will help you build your resume, um, and they will also take you to career fairs so that you can actually get these interviews. So that is pretty successful. Uh, but can we give a job guarantee? Absolutely not. So I just want to be very candid there because that'll be a promise uh, that nobody can make today, right? Um, the other question that keeps coming up uh, quite a bit, and I'll just repeat that a little bit, um, data science, should I also learn machine learning? So maybe, Ronald, this is a question for you possibly. Um, I'm, I'm planning to become a data scientist. Should machine learning be part of my curriculum? Should I learn that? What are your thoughts? That's a, I think that's a pretty straightforward answer there. Yeah, I think it, it really depends which direction you want to go. So we went through all the different, let's say, roles that you have. If you want to become a data scientist, it's good to put some time and, and understanding in algorithm development. If you choose another path, then it's a question, do you need it? But general knowledge is very important because you need to understand what capabilities are, what is possible, what's not possible. Um, because you need to decide all the time, do you spend time in it, and is there a chance to success? Can, um, can you judge the, the data quality? Um, is there enough data? Um, can you build the, 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 the training model um, or not? So a general knowledge for sure, in that knowledge really depends on your role. Thank you, Ronald. All right, with that said, I think we've covered, I, I would say, 80 to 90% of all the questions that came in. Uh, if you asked a question and we didn't answer it, my sincere apologies. Uh, we did have a lot of questions coming, so we tried our best to thematically take some questions and answer them well. Ronald, a huge thank you for your insights and wisdom today. I'm sure there was a lot of value that came uh, from, from this conversation. Thank you so much, Ronald, and thank you again, Anand. If you have any further questions that didn't get addressed during today's presentation, well, just tweet us at simplylearn and we'll get back to you. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us, and good luck in your data science careers. Bye-bye, everyone.